All right then, so we've created this form so a user can add a new pizza, but at the minute if they add in some data, choose a type, a crust, and press on submit, then nothing happens. And that's because we're not handling this post request. So what we ultimately need to do is set up a route to handle that post request. Now at the minute inside our form, we've said that the action is forward slash pizzas. That means that we're gonna send this post request to this endpoint. So just going back to our naming conventions for this pizza model, I've added on another line. So this request is gonna be a post request and the route is gonna be forward slash pizzas. Now, this is the same as the get request. The get request for forward slash pizzas uses the index action and that grabs all of the data from our pizzas table and it lists it on an index view. But this time, when we send a post request and send it to this route, we're not gonna to go to the database and grab more stuff. Instead, inside a store action inside the pizza controller, again, a naming convention, what we're gonna do is take the data from the form that we get from the post request and we're gonna save it to the database. Now, we don't need a view for this because at the end of the day, we're not then returning a view for this post request. What we'll probably do is take the data, save the data to the database, and then redirect them to maybe this route or, I don't know, the welcome screen. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to create this action right here, the store action on the pizza controller, and we're going to set up this route handler which invokes that so we can save it to the database. So then back in our routes file, what I'm going to do is place another route right here. So route, double colon, oops, spell that correctly. And this is going to be a post route this time. So not get post because we're accepting a post request. And the route is going to be forward slash pizzas. And then we need to specify the pizza controller right here and say what action we want to use. It's going to be an action called store because at the end of the day, we're storing something in the database ultimately. So now we've created that, we can go ahead and create this action inside the pizza controller. So let's do that. I'm gonna say down here, public, and it's a function called store. And then inside here, ultimately, we're gonna save something to the database. We're not gonna do that just yet. Instead, what I'm gonna do is just return a redirect. So return redirect, and then we'll say, forward slash. So when we submit the form at the minute, the only thing that would happen is we would take the data, not really do anything with it, and then just redirect to the home screen, you know, the welcome view. So if I save this and try it out, there is going to be a problem. And you'll see that now. Let me just refresh first of all, do this and then say order pizza. Now we get error 419 page expired. And that's because we've missed something out from our form. And this error right here is actually built into Laravel to help protect from cross-site request forgery. And that's a type of potential attack on a server. So to get around this, all we need to do is come to our form right here, and then inside the form, we need to use a blade directive, and that is CSRF, cross-site request forgery, okay? So now, if we say this, this should work. So let me go back to the form. I'm gonna refresh and add something in, say order pizza, and it redirects us back to the welcome screen. Okay, so that's all working, but at the minute, we're not accessing the data which we take in right here. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. If we go to the controller right here, we get access to the data on the request. So we can say request, and then whatever bit of data we want, so I could say name, and that gets us whatever a user has typed into the field with the name attribute of name. Does that make sense? So if we go back now, we could actually log this to the terminal down here by using a function, and that function is called error underscore log, and I'm just gonna log this down here. So now when we submit the form, we're gonna grab that bit of data from the name field, log it down here, and then we're gonna redirect. Now we need to go to the terminal where we're actually running the local development server. So save it, and let's go back over here. I'm gonna refresh on the form, and I'm gonna type in Sean, and then order pizza. So if I go back over here, we can see that now Sean has been logged down here to the terminal. 
So cool, let's do the same thing with the other fields. So I could grab the type, and remember, that was the name attribute of this thing right here. So whatever a user selects, that's gonna be the type. And then finally, we have the base as well right here. So let's go over here and do base, like so. Save that and refresh, or rather go to order a pizza. I'm gonna type in Yoshi, and then this is gonna be Volcano, and Thin and Crispy, order pizza. We get redirected, and you can see over here, all of that data is logged. So now we're accessing that data, and instead of just logging it down here, at this point, what we'd probably wanna do is save that data, as a record in the database. And we'll do that in the next video.